Paul here and today I'm going to walk you through this shader wall scene for Redshift to be used with Cinema 4D. Before I actually dive into the scene functionality I just want to mention that um, let's go here the HDR image that I'm using here as the environment is property of the USC, the Institute of Creative Technologies. You can get it using this URL here. And the scene that the image that you are going to download it's this one, the Uffizi Gallery Italy. I'm not going to distribute the image with uh, with the scene because I don't have the rights to do that. So, you know, just download it and use the HDR version and you just need to place it inside the text folder and all is good. Okay, with that aside, I just want to um, mention that um, currently Redshift is still in alpha stage. So, it's probable that something in the future will change and it might also change uh, or even break some functionality on this scene. If that happens, um, just drop me an email using my contact here and I will do my best to help you. Okay, so let's have a look into the parameters. I've got here several parameters for us to use and take the best of this scene. So let me just fire up here the Redshift IPR and as you can see I'm using a basic material here it looks like a greyish plastic and we've got here three different sizes in order to help us out creating materials that are meant to be used in objects with um, sizes similar to these ones. Okay so if I go here and click on the 50 centimeter you can see that the scene automatically adapts to it so as you can see we've got this information here and also with the 10 centimeter here as you can see I'm using that for field if you don't want to use that for field although it's not adding really uh, too much to the render times you can simply switch it off like that I'm going to leave it on Let's just refresh these, okay. So, uh, other than having this field here for the shader ball material, let's actually drag and drop another one so you can see what happens. So, um, the scene automatically updates to the new material. Uh, let's use like a tinted glass, like that. So, this tinted glass with uh, shader boulders of this size is behaving like this. If we switch to the 50 centimeter like that, you can see that um, the material adapts perfectly to the scene size. That's why we are getting less uh, tint on the glass itself, because the thickness, which is this number that we are getting here, which is giving the thickness of this middle step as well as the shader ball thickness itself too. Uh, it's, it's allowing us to really see how this material is behaving with a thickness like this and you can see that this uh, tint it's, it's getting a lot more subtle when we use a, uh, you know like uh, less thickness so to speak so this is adapting perfectly to the scene size which is awesome okay so let's go back to 200 centimeter let's just refresh this okay uh, let's use a wood type of material here so we can see the functionality we've got related to the UVs so we've got these parameters here that will allow us to really play with the UVs like this so I unwrapped all this geometry so you can simply test how you know getting different tile values like that will work so as you can see everything is adapting correctly if we go to the 50 centimeter shader wall we are getting different results using these values here and also for the 10 centimeter like this so these are all related to the shader wall itself. 
So um, we've got here a cloth visibility on off and this actually turns on a cloth object to help us out creating um, fabric type of materials. Let's go to the 200 centimeter one like this and let me actually use the basic material in order to just make the scene a little bit more neutral. I've got here a carpet type of material let's drag and drop it here on this field and as you can see now we can twirl down these um, cloth uh, UV parameters here in order to help visualize materials meant to be used with these objects. As you can see uh, we've got different sizes here so everything is adapting to the size and of course because the texture is not high resolution enough it's not you know looking very good at this size and you know if I want to change these I, c I can use these parameters so you've got different parameters to control UVs for either the shader ball or the cloth material so uh, this is it guys I really hope you enjoyed um, this presentation so use and abuse this scene um, and I really hope this scene will really help you speed up your material creation workflow okay guys thanks for watching and see you on the next one bye bye